right now, Eyewitness Sports. Tonight in Eyewitness Sports, we take a look back at this weekend. Very busy one for both of the professional teams here in the city, starting with the Comets hosting the Marlies in an early contest on the road on Saturday and followed up by Utica City FC playing host to their biggest rival, the Baltimore Blast, on Sunday. In chronological order, we hit the ice. First, Marlies bested the Comets Friday via a shutout 4 0 and started things on the right note again on Saturday. Josiah Slavin slings it on net 1 0. Less than three minutes after that, though, Comets get their first goal of the back to back. Robbie Russo's one timer is wide, but Timur Abragamov there to clean it up on the backhand. We're even at one apiece at the end of one. Second period had a lot more than that. Six goals between the two teams, including this one from who ends up being Justin Dowling. Xavier Perrant down on the knee. He gets the assist, though. Don't worry. Comets up 5-3 at the end of two. But as we've seen a few times this year, can't hold on to that final frame lead with under five to go. Robert Master Simone on a breakaway, ties things at five, and we go to O. But Utica able to kill off a penalty in the extra period all the way to the shootout. Toronto sends Alex Steves and Kiefer Bellows up against Isaac Poulter and he shuts them out. The other way, Graham Clark and Justin Dowling both beat Keith Petrozuli. Comets win in the shootout 6-5 to five, the final score, picking up a very valuable two points and keeping them within striking distance of the final North Division playoff spot. Timur Abragamov finishes with a goal and an assist. Justin Dowling with that game-winning shootout goal. And in net, Isaac Poulter, not a great night giving up the five, but steps up in that shootout to hold Toronto scoreless and improves his record on the year to an impressive 13-5-1. Then after the changeover on Saturday night, Utica City FC hit the pitch, trying to expand on the winning ways of their hockey counterparts, starting on the right foot. Get it? <laughs> Milton De Andrade puts UCFC in the lead in quarter one, and he does use the right foot to do it and get ready to hear his name a lot. The first of a few for him. Baltimore down, but not out of the contest. They answer from distance. Victor Pereiras, the longtime Florida Tropic, bags goal seven on the year in game nine. He finished by scoring goal eight later in the contest as well. The city jumped out to a four to one lead early in the third quarter. Baltimore got it back to four three, but Frank Tayu picks up an assist here on the wide shot deflection settled by De Andrade, and he taps it in left foot this time. City back up two, and then Nilton follows that with a dagger. Beats the defender easily, just crazy move, and buries it. This game played in honor of Avil Wood, a soccer star in Syracuse, who trained with UCFC captain Nate Bordeaux, and who tragically lost her life at age 14 just over a year ago. The players all wearing number 19 patches on their arms that you may have seen them pointing to in these highlights. The Blues get the win in her honor, scoring twice after Baltimore brought out the extra attacker for an 8-5 final score. De Andrade finishes with six points, five of those goals, as Frank Tayu added two points with a goal and an assist each. Juan Alava and Steven Fernandez, the other goal scorers, an important win as Utica pulls away from Milwaukee in the Eastern Division standings. They were off Sunday, so now five points ahead of the wave for second place in the East, but still ten points behind Monterey, who have won all 15 of the games that they've played this year. The big news today is sectional brackets, specifically for girls winter volleyball in the area. So let's run through which local sides are primed for title runs in each of the four classes, A through D. Starting in A, New Hartford has only lost one game all year. It was their first. Since then, 16-0. They'll play the winner of the first round game between eight and nine seeds, Watertown and Proctor. Then we go to the 2-7 matchup, RFA with the same record as the Spartans, 16-1. and Those two are actually the one loss for one another. They split the regular season series, so on a collision course for the trilogy finale in the final. Black Knights have to get past CVA, though, and then the winner of the contest between Camden and Whitesboro. The Blue Devils 15-4 and themselves, and we move to Class B. A few more first round games, all of them with local inclusion. Oneida going to General Brown for the chance to play top seeded Canastota. Howland Patton hosting Adirondack to get to second seeded CBA. And VVS going to South Jeff to then try and make their way to Chittenango. Meanwhile, Clinton is already in the next round as the four seed they'll play at home against Lowville. Class C actually adds another first round contest. This one Kind of taking more of a regional look at how this goes, at least once you get past the second round, that is. Mount Markham and Cooperstown, the by seeds on one half, and then Beaver River and Tully, uh, the other by seeds. First round matchups, including Sequoia hosting South Lewis. Dodgeville doing the same for Port Byron. Little Falls welcoming Morrisville Eaton. 
in Westmoreland traveling to Weedsport. And then in the final class, that's class D. 12 teams included. Remsen and Town of Webb getting buys as the two and four seeds at 15 and four and 12 and four respectively, trying to earn their way to that round from the local schools. Stockbridge, the five, New York Mills, the seven, Waterville, the 11, and Owen D. Young, the 12. Stockbridge and Mills each a game above 500 on the year. So those brackets start tomorrow. We're talking about tonight, though, the start of Super Bowl week. The big game kicks off on Sunday in Las Vegas. All week, Eyewitness News will present special reports from Vegas on the game and what is going on around it. A game this big is never just a standalone game. The focus is always on the two teams that are going head to head for the NFL championship. The two teams arriving in Vegas yesterday. John Volt was there when the Chiefs and Niners were wheels down on the tarmac. The defending Super Bowl champs are in the house, arriving at Harry Reid International Airport here at Sands Aviation earlier this afternoon. And the charter you see behind me there is the plane that brought the Niners in about an hour later. And as with anything done in Las Vegas, well, it's all about the show. Leave it to Vegas to have a greeting party of Elvi on hand to welcome the arriving AFC champs. And just as they did last year in Phoenix, the Chiefs landed first. Good omen? Don't tell the odds makers, but we're going with it. As the team stepped foot on the Nevada soil where they've won before, finding Chiefs fans to greet them was, well, a challenge. Fans of football, yes. I think we're pretty excited because everyone here likes sports. And of course, you'd be more excited if it were? The Eagles. Last year. Yeah. One team is back this year. Jennifer Green's son, Max, is actually a Seahawks fan, but he was pumped to get so close to anything NFL. Because I've never really seen like NFL players in person, so I'm excited to see, like, everyone says they're really big. So I'm just like curious to see how tall they are, how big they like, really are. I can confirm that. They're really big. Yeah. Wait, maybe this red shirt signals a big Chiefs fan. I, unfortunately, I'm not. I am a diehard Detroit Lions fan. Your banner ought to be right up there. Our banner should be hanging up right up there, yes, sir. Well, it is Raider country after all, but it's the Chiefs who again are deplaning at the home of a Super Bowl, and they'll prepare this week at the Raiders training facility. Hospitable of those Raiders, right? Hey, wait, we seen him, a real-life Chiefs fan. We got Elvis here in red. He's got to be a Chiefs fan. Uh, really, I'm a Cowboys fan, but they're not here. Well, maybe next time they will be here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's as close to Elvis as I get, folks. Uh, good time here at Sands Aviation, where they basically starting to shut things down. Both teams are in town and ready to go. Tomorrow night, it's opening night at Allegiant Stadium. It's an NFL tradition. Monday night, both teams will appear. The Chiefs go first for about an hour and 15 minutes. They'll be available for interviews. They'll also be carried live on the NFL Network, as will the Niners, who will follow. And our coverage will continue all week long right here from the home of Super Bowl 58, Las Vegas. John Holt, Fox 4 News working for you. Coming up after the break, we're talking about how exactly Las Vegas got the Super Bowl. A city filled with gambling. Why do the major sports now flock to it for their big events? That's coming up right after this. <laughs> 